Hi YouTube family, welcome back. Okay, today we will be talking about my new boo. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna get a little personal because I really didn't wanna share this because I wasn't ready to share it. Um, because I still have that other story that I need to share with you guys about, but I haven't gotten a chance to get around to it. But it's gonna take me a while to talk about the testimony with Yaya and Uncle and everything that went through. Um, but there's a lot of comments from my other videos when I talk about the dating. And some people were like, girl, I seen you, I seen you uh, posted a dread head. Stop saying that you, you're not out here dating. You, you, I saw, we saw you dating. Okay, so I did, um, I did post my poll. Remember, there was a video of eating crab legs and I did tell you that I didn't meet a nice guy. And, um, we, uh, that's what y'all, I promised y'all that I was going to tell y'all the story, um, about it. So here we are. <clears throat> so I am dating only one person. <laughs> See, that, that's the scary part. That's what I meant in the other video. The scary part is I don't want to jump into anything too fast. I just got out of something over 10 years, but I simply just don't know how to date multiple men at one time. I feel like that if we're talking, then I'm going to give my attention to you. I'm going to give my loyalty to you until I feel like there is nothing, you know, to it. Uh, I still, until I feel like there's something bad or actually I won't even give a guy any time of day if there's no, there's no attraction, not even physical attraction, but if there's nothing flaring up, if I don't feel it. Uh, and I think God knows that. Uh, God knows that about me. God knows that I'm a very loyal person and I'm I'm not a very flirtation pers flirtatious person. Um, I didn't you know, then made my body into uh, eye candy, you know, got this big old butt and waist and these boobs and I like to get dolled up and glammed up. Uh, but I do a lot of that for myself because, you know, I'm a really girly girl and I like to do hair and makeup and, you know, I'm just really girly. But I don't necessarily think I do it to attract men, uh, you know, to get their money or something or to, to get it. I don't even know how. I don't even know how to be a gold digger. I don't even know how to go on multiple dates, just alone lying or trying to balance out more than one man. You know, I've been with one person for 10 years and I never, I never cheated or did anything out of the norm. And God knows that. And even through the run and the casino, and I want to share the story with you guys about my new boo. Uh, he, he doesn't want to be tagged. Uh, he really doesn't he doesn't like to take pictures or videos he's a very private private person and i think it's amazing because i'm such a public person uh you guys know me personally you know hi guys hi youtube family i love you guys like you guys have been through all these things with me like you guys can go back and watch all these videos and see details uh, even though i was trying to hide things and wasn't sharing everything and just pretending like I was happy. And you guys can go back in the old videos and you guys point out these things that I never even noticed or I did notice and I was hiding. Or, you know, I, I show up on YouTube with no makeup on. I, there, there's videos where I have literally a skull, like, you know, like under my wigs or I got the braids, I got no eyelashes. I'm literally just up out of the bed. There's videos where I was bigger and I was, you know, just in the kitchen. So we, we're very personal. Uh, but my new boo, he is very private and I think is an amazing thing because it's complete opposite. I'm learning to, I'm learning the qualities of how he lives his life and it's actually helping me. Uh, I don't know if y'all noticed, but I feel my energy is completely different. I've been less hyperactive. Uh, I haven't gone out in months. Uh, I haven't, I haven't drank. I haven't popped no pills. Like I literally... I've been sober for like four or five months now. Like, no, more. Shoot, J July, August, September, October, November. Um, I've been sober. Uh, I've been more focused. Yeah, I started wilding out. I've been doing a lot better than I was the other season. I'm not hyper. I take my time. Um, you know, I feel, I don't know if it's maturity. I don't know if it's because what I've been going through, what I, what I went through to get me to this point. Uh, 
you know, y'all see the video of Top Notch or J, uh, J Will and stuff like that. You know, people, you know, when I do monk things and stuff like that. But I honestly, I don't hang out with nobody like that anymore. I haven't been to the club in a long time. I talked to one or two people here and there. But I feel a change in me. I don't know if it's maturity or I'm just tired. Uh, emotionally, I was tired. Uh, physically, I was tired. Spiritually, I was exhausted. But I have learned so much from my journey that I've been sharing with you guys. So, I'm going to share with you guys uh, how me and my new boo linked up and how we met. And, you know, I'm not going to say his name. Um, we're just going to call him. Uh, we are going to call him BC. Okay, his initial. Okay. So, ready for the story? I've, I've been with my, I was with my ex for 10 years. Never talked to no other men. And four years ago, four years ago, when I first bought the shop in Capitol Heights, um, we were going through a rough patch. Remember in the, in the divorce video, I told y'all, every time I was ready to leave, the devil offers me something, okay? So four years ago, we were actually having a really rough patch in, in our relationship. And I was hanging with uh, the two ex-friends that, that at the time, I was getting close to them. They were a couple, okay? And I spent a lot of time on the phone with them or some stuff like that. They'll come up to the shop, sit with me, you know, because I was working long, long, long hours in the hood and they'd come hang out with me. And he was jealous. He, he, Remy never wanted anybody around me, near me. He chased away all of my friends, like every single one of my friends. That's why he hates Yaya so much because he isn't physically here to manipulate me, to push her away. It didn't matter if you were good in my life or anything. If you were getting anywhere too close to me, he is going to find a way to get rid of you. And that's what he did. But four years ago, he was cheating on me. Okay. To this day, he will not admit it. There's, there's sometimes that I would get him really, really drunk and I'd be like, you know, just admit to it. You know, get it off your chest. Free yourself. What are you going to die with this secret? He's going to take that to the grave. His denial, he's going to take this girl, Nita, he's going to take her to the grave. So I was working six days a week, okay? Uh, I just had you. She's probably one or two, something like 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 one or two. And I work six days a week. I work from 10 a.m., sometimes to 1 a.m., long hours. But the money was coming, and I had to pay bills. You know, we want to grow. We want to get a bigger house. You know, the popularity, the clients are coming through. My nails are getting better. So I'm just at my peak right now, and I'm just working. I'm hustling. And so there was a girl. I did not find out until one day I came home, and Javon says, Daddy has another, you know, daddy has another woman in here. And I was like, what? Are you, you, you serious? Like, I remember getting in a fight and I remember him begging me. He said, please, can we keep her? Can we please keep her? Blah, blah, blah. And I was like, you know, I know he was weird. He didn't have no friends and stuff like that. So I was like, okay. You know, I, I just couldn't grasp it in my head. So as the very kind person I am, do I even agree to meet with her? Mind you, my babysitter next door started saying stuff. She was like, I think he's cheating on you. There's a there's a silver car that comes over here uh, during the day and she leaves. And he's, she's like, it's a, you know, it's a light skinned girl or a brown. I don't, I don't know. So I'm like, okay. So says that she comes. He finally admit. He's like, okay, it's my friend Nita. He, he claims that him and her brother, him and her, he know her brother. I say, so why are you not chilling with the brother? Why are you chilling with her? He's like, please, can we keep her? She a good friend. And I'm like, a good friend? A good friend wouldn't come over to a married person's house and not wait for the wife to come home. You never once introduced me. So clear, this girl was coming over my house probably like four times a week. No, not four times a week, for the past four months or something like that. And I was working so hard that I didn't even think anything of it. You know, I was just caught up in working, caught up with my other friends that I was talking to. He said, well, you always talking to the other friends. Your other friends, you didn't give me no attention. So she, she, she talks to me. She talks to me about things that I want. And I'm just like, but that's not the same. I said, they're married. They're a couple that I'm talking to. 
you're talking to a young girl that's single. You cannot compare both. And if I'm lacking at something, I told her, if I'm lacking at something, let me know so we can fix it. It's not okay. And I said, she's not a good friend. If she was a good friend and she was just a friend, she would come and get her nails done. And she would come sit in my shop. She would come meet me. Or if she's chilling at the house, she would wait until I get home, meet me, show her face. This girl never met me. So I called one night, whatever. And my thing, I met up with them just to see the vibe, you know what I'm saying? And I remember talking to one of my ex-friends and I was like, I said, if I let him be with her or continue to be friends, when we get in a problem and we fall off, that's the person he's going to run to first and fall, be in love with. Now, if I don't let him talk to her, he's going to still continue to talk to her anyways. So remember that story, okay? So I told him no, but he still continued to talk to us. I was like, oh, fuck that shit, uh-uh. Dead that shit. I'm not comfortable, dead it, you know? I even try to give it, but no, dead it. I'm like, fuck no, right? So I was working when I first bought the shop, okay? And my type, yes, I do have a type. Uh, I like tall, skinny dreadheads. I like them over six foot, like six four. I like them skinny. I like the moldy men. Ask Amber Rose <laughs> why she likes skinny men. But I like them skinny, tall, with dreads. Um, my preference, my type. That's my type. Yeah, that's my type. So I was working one day, and I remember a guy walking into the shop. He just came from the barber shop next door. He came into the shop, and I was like, I think one of my friends was there. I don't remember. I was like. This is a setup. I was like, is, is, is he setting me up? Somebody's setting me up. I was like, because this guy is my type. So I was like, this got to be a setup. Like somebody's setting me up, trying to see if I'm going to get caught up. Da -da -da. And he came in, he asked for a massage. Okay, so, you know, we do in the nail salon. We, honey, whatever you like, I do for you. You want eyebrow, eyelash, massage, pedicure, see bye, pedicure. Uh, so... He asked for, you know, we had to sign up, you know, uh, massage. And he asked for massage. I said, well, I'm busy right now. You, can you come back? I don't know. I think I told him to come back Monday or something. And he came back. And so when he came back, I was like, this is weird. And I, okay, and I remember, you know, it's a ghetto nail salon massage. And he was never perverted. Um, and I, he was never perverted, nothing. You know, laid on his back. I massaged, okay? Mind you, I've never seen or touched another man. I think me and Remy was six years into our relationship. Never seen or touched another man. And I massaged his back, everything's okay. And I remember him flipping over, you know, okay, let me, now let me do your head, you know, like, you know, from the front words. And I remember when he flipped over, I seen another man's like, like in his underwear and they were like boxer briefs. And I seen dick print for the first time. And I remember shaking y'all, like I was like, I was like, oh my God, I was doing his head. I was like, don't look at the dick. Don't look at the dick. Oh my God, don't look at the dick. Like I was shaking so bad. And I remember leaving the nail salon. I was calling everybody else. I was like, oh yeah. I was thinking, he's like, oh my God. The thing go, go, gag it. room I was I was calling all the nail salon ladies. I was like, yo, I was shaking. I never seen another man print or anything like that. But BC had, uh, became my client, you know, came, came regular, talked to me. Uh, got manicures, pedicures, very, you know, but I, I never gave, I never really, you know, it was just on a client level. Like, hey, how was your week? Like, you know, how have you been? Uh, he'll come, you know, like every two weeks or something like that. And I remember when we promised me he was going to stop talking to the girl. And one day, back then I only had like 50,000 followers. I didn't even have that much. And I, it was right before Halloween that he told me he was going to his uncle's house. Okay, and I was, you know, I was always an easy going girl. You want to go out? Go ahead. I don't, I don't blow you up. I don't, I don't, I don't stress. I don't trip. You know, I believe that you know you want to go hang out. I'm not gonna trip. You want to go to your uncle's? Okay, go. But he was acting suspicious that night because I remember when he was driving, he kept calling me. He don't normally do that. This dude want to sit on the phone with me. He's not like this. And so, the next day was the most embarrassing moment in my life. I remember. I remember they sent it to my friend's phone. They sent it to my nail page, but I didn't see it. And it was a picture of him, of Remy, and another girl at a fucking chicken and waffles. And they were having lunch. And the, the person, whoever sent it, I didn't even have a lot of followers back then. So it was just like, that's so embarrassing. I think it was a white guy that sent it to me. And they were like, look at them. Isn't this your husband? And they're drinking out of one straw. 
I remember losing it. I was talking about losing the impact of everything. I was like, I'm really? Like, you still talking to this girl? And I remember saying to Remy, my exact word, I can be talking to BC, but out of respect and loyalty for you, I'm not talking to him on that level. You know, I'm not sneaking around. He's just my client. Remy's exact word, Mark, I'm marking his word from four years ago. His exact words was, go talk to that mm-mm. I don't care. I'm not stopping. I'm not going to stop talking to this girl. Y'all, I, I was just so, like, because I was so loyal to him. I was so hurt. I remember just flipping out. I remember going home, and I remember packing up everything, throwing it outside. And I, I, I didn't eat for days. I remember I was so blown. But even when he did that and told me that shit, I still didn't go talk to BC. You know, BC was still always just my client. They gave me good advice. You know, I even got to the point, I even tried to hook BC up with the girl that he was talking, that Remy was talking to, so that she can leave my relationship alone. Crazy as it sounds, I was like, hey, you know, I got this girl, you know, I can hook you up with, um, just so that I can save my relationship. And that's, that's when the, y'all know India Love, so the producer from their show, called and this is when the devil offered you offer me something again they say hey we want to drive all the way from detroit we want to shoot a sister over your family now i gotta put my family back together because i'm chasing over after the, these shows so they come they film relationships still bad okay and i'm thinking i'm saving it da, 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 da. i take him back blah 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 blah. we're still going through this shit where he would not leave this girl up Okay, so my bad, y'all. <laughs> so, Javon is true. So, where was I at? Oh yeah. So, the the show, the people in the show. So we didn't get picked up for that show. Uh, but Love and Hip Hop was already hitting me up. But I had them on the back end because I didn't really want to do it because I didn't want to, you know, put my family business out there and stuff like that. But they were already in the back end. I was trying to get my own show so that I could control it. Right before we move, he was still dealing with her. Like, it was just embarrassing after embarrassing, embarrassing. But I still, I still forgave him. Why? Because we're moving to Atlanta. And I'm like, okay, well, we're moving to Atlanta to do Love and Hip Hop. Hopefully, he don't embarrass me. And, and we can move and we can be away from her. And he will let that girl go. This girl that he would not let go. I'm like, dog, did she do voodoo on you? Like, it did not matter what I did, what I said, what we went through. He would not leave this girl alone. So the devil, I wanted to leave. Things were getting bad. But the devil offered that love and hip hop. I drove my family all the way across with, with the friends that I wasn't supposed to. That fell off quick. That was a bad idea. I will admit that on my behalf. So we get here to Atlanta. Okay. I remember when my ex-friend and him, they got in a fight. This is the reason why we fell off, okay? Because those friends, I'm not, they are very obsessed over me. And, you know, it's good that they had my back, but it was a little bit creepy obsessive, like especially her, my friend's husband. He was a little bit creepy obsessed with me. He didn't have no space to talk, but he's just as bad. But, you know, he always had, he did have my back, but it was creepy. So he... They get in a fight and physical fight and and Dama burst out and was like, he don't, Remy don't even love you. He was like, Remy don't love you. He's here for the money. That's all he talks about. And then this lie, I don't know if it's a lie or not. It just sounded outrageous to me. He was like, his plan is to save up $50,000, which is really not a lot of money to run away with. He was like, he's planning to save up $50,000 $50, and he's going to run away with that girl. When he walks the dog, he's still on the phone with that girl, Nita. I lost it. I remember, like, kicking him out. Like, I kicked him out. And I didn't have nobody to talk to. But BC was still always just, you know, my client who gave me a good advice. It's like, he had a lot of sense, you know. But I never got to know him on a personal level. And this was when I kind of attempted to talk to another guy to prove a point. And I remember calling BC. This is like three years ago when we first moved to Atlanta. And, you know, I've done his nails for over a year now, trying to hook him up with Nita and all types of stuff. 
And I remember that conversation, you know, and he was like, he even had Remy's side. He said, first off, what are those people doing in your house? You need to get rid of them, go find your husband and fix your relationship, whatever it is, and they is your husband. So he always knew that I was loyal and I always knew that he was never disrespectful. He never came on to me, he always respected my marriage. And uh, I mean, he had, a, he had a girlfriend at the time. And uh, so, you know, I went and I, I saved for marriage. And then, but I mean, still keep talking to this girl somehow, some way. And I just always kept forgiving, forgiving, even though stuff was still there. Clearly, he slept with the girl because, I mean, multiple times the neighbor said it. I mean, my son said it. And you still talking to her and we're a whole nother state. So, now we're going to get into these signs. Okay, in the divorce video that I just made a few months ago when everything ended, everything was literally signs, 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 signs from number signs to just crazy signs of connections. Like, I cannot, it just feels so crazy because now that everything is over and now that I've, I'm kind of in a peaceful place, these signs hasn't popped up as much as it was. It was back to back signs. I knew it was over. I, like with Remy's mom, I, I I respected her a lot. You know, she wasn't, you know, normal and she had her alcoholism, but I always took care of her. I never, I always respected her. Sometimes she get real drunk and she'll cuss my kids out. And Javon had to deal with a lot of mental abuse and stuff like that. Y'all will hear it in the back of some videos or the moments. If you go back, you you know, she be tripping out when I'm, I'm not home, but sometimes even when I am home, but I never disrespected her. But I knew it was over when I went to DC to go do my 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 birthday music video shoot. And I even gave him a, a last chance that day. And he just kept trying to make Yaya the reason why he don't want to go. But she didn't even do nothing to him. And I remember I even to the last day I said, yo, Rem, do you want to come to DC? He chose to stay here to steal a check from me so that he can have money. Whatever. Fine. Okay. So, this last day when I knew I was done, I just snapped, like, I, I snapped. I remember, I couldn't take it anymore. They were, I was supposed to take his mother with me to DC. Mind you, she just, she just lost a kidney, okay, that she tried to hide from us that I knew about. And um, she had liver failure just a few days ago. And they come back to my house from, I guess, the brother's girlfriend's house they've been at. And she's already back to drinking. And she's drunk. She starts cussing out my friends. And I had enough. I was fed up. I remember putting my leg up. And I said, you know what? What's up? I got time. I've had enough of y'all. I remember cussing all of them out. I said, I had enough. I can't take it. I said, you can't tell me who I should care about, what I should do because I'm taking care of all of y'all. I remember kirking off on his mom and I'm just like, you don't even care about yourself. You just had, you just, you have one kidney. You lost your liver and you're still drinking. You don't care about me. If you don't care about yourself, you don't care about my kids. And I, I just lost it that day. And I remember leaving the next day. She changed her mind. She didn't want to go. And I, I, I was free from Rem. I like, like we had a horrible, horrible text message that was going at it. I'm just like done with you. Like I cannot take this anymore. And I remember saying my last text message to him. I said, this time you're gonna drown and my arms will not be out there to save you. I'm sorry, we were going in on each other. This is how Remy, I don't know how his mind worked, manipulated, who knows? I get there, he go and text me, hey, have a great time. Are you fucking crazy? Like we're done, like I'm exhausted. I cannot take no more. And you're, you're texting me, I have a great time. We're done. Our relationship is done, okay? And I knew I was done. And the reason I knew I was done because I never disrespected his mother. But that day, I just had, I let it out on all of them. And there's a whole nother testimony between that, a long one, a very spiritual one that I'm gonna share to y'all later. But just know, before I cursed everybody out, there was a whole long spiritual journey. And I, I would, they were still apart. You know, I, I wasn't, you know, cutting them off yet. You know what I'm saying? So, 
I don't know where it would cut off. I think uh, I was talking about how, I, you know, the spiritual journey, I, it was still, you know, it was still ongoing. But the day that I left to DC for the music video, I was completely done. I knew it in my heart. I was not, I couldn't even reply anymore. After I sent that text message that you will drown, and I just can't, I can't handle this type of like mental abuse or I don't even know what you call it, manipulation, like dealing with this narcissist. Like I, I was done. It, my, I was completely done because he was still texting me like everything was okay. Like I'm not okay. I, I'm not okay. These signs, all these, this crazy stuff that's going on. I'm not okay. And I still wasn't okay because I was in DC after the music video and I was at the casino. Mind you, we've been far, we we've been done for the past year. Okay. But even in this year, as me going to this casino or going out to the clubs, going to places, I still was never able to talk to another man. Okay. I met BC four years ago and we probably talked once a year for advice on my relationship but he always bc always um sends me dm like you know when if you see something on the blog he's like you know keep your head up make sure you put your family first and you know you know you good and he always checks up on me support my book he's like hey you know i think last time i talked to him he was like you know uh let me get a signed copy of your book I've always been supportive i don't know what got into me at 2 30 in the morning but I decided to text him and I, and I didn't even text, I sent a DM, I was like, yeah, text me. And it wasn't on no, I didn't know where it was gonna go. I just know that I didn't have nobody else uh, to get my mind off of what I was going through. Like, I literally had no bait. I had I had no, nobody else in my, like, I don't flirt, I don't cheat. I was always been loyal, it didn't matter. Like, the, my cheating was with the casino, like, all these times that I've been out, I had literally no bait in my phone. Uh, I guess except for him, and that's from four years ago that somebody I talked to once a year. Um, and I, I remember sending a text and I was like, eh, do you gamble? <laughs> and he, um, he was like, yeah, you know, gamble. Come to find out, you know, he's a gambler, but he's been actually chill. So it was perfect for me as well. Cause I couldn't escape, it was, it, I couldn't stop gambling. So, um, you know, we decided to link up that weekend to go gambling. And I was still with Yaya and I was still with Uncle. And um, I went to the casino, met up with him. We lost. <laughs> I tried to teach him back red and we lost. Um, and he had to leave uh, and he had to go to a class. So I guess he called on his class because it was late. And I made a phone call and I knew it in my heart that it was over with me and Rem. And I'm attempting to talk to another man. I didn't know how it was gonna go. And I remember waving to Yaya and Uncle, and I'm like, yo, if I get in this Uber and I go see him after the casino, that means this is it. Like, I've been trying to end this relationship with Rem for 10 years. And I just knew if I get into this Uber and I go over there, then it's really over. I'm, for the first time in 10 years, I'm going to talk to, another man without giving a fuck about my relationship like i'm really done you know like I, there's a lot of people that cheat i have a lot of friends who who cheat and they didn't know how to balance it out but for me it was such a big deal and for me i just never have talked to another man so it was very really big deal to me and the coincidence because when i went over there to meet up with him so we're not doing anything. You're gonna listen to my testimony. You're gonna listen to what I've been through because I can't even believe half of the things I've been through. You're gonna listen to me. So I remember, I remember the first thing I noticed was his window and outside his window is a church. So he wakes up in front of the big church every morning. And because I was on a spiritual run, I'm just like, oh my God, that's a sign. And I, I remember sitting, sitting in his bed and just, you're, you're gonna listen to the story and everything I've been through. And then I realized how selfish I have been for four years. For four years, uh, I never listened to BC. Uh, all I knew was, you know, that he had a girlfriend two years ago. And I, I asked him, I said, if you had a girlfriend, would you would have met up with me? You know, if I, I, and he told me no. 
and he told me straight up probably not you know i've listened to your advice like i have him for years but if i was with a girl you know i wouldn't have because you know he his code is loyalty too so to find somebody who has so much loyalty because he was never disrespectful to me for four years so to find somebody who believes in loyalty as much as i do it was an amazing feeling now these signs right here mark this time so people can see <laughs> see in the comments these signs are the main part of this story when i ask god and i pray for a sign i'm gonna talk about these signs were just crazy okay Remember, I just told y'all that his, my ex's mother just lost a kidney and well, the whole family, the whole family, the whole family was alcoholics. And that's when the extreme alcoholics and that, that was like the death of our relationship because it just, it, it consumed them. It made them became, they couldn't function. It was just gone. So they acted like they couldn't fight through their alcoholism. They were not going to give it up at all. When BC told me that, you know, he needs to drink a lot too, and he's been sober for two years, and he has self-discipline now, because I was like, come on, drink with me, because at the time, I was still drinking, I was still doing stuff, and he was like, no, nah, I'm good, I'm very well disciplined, I've been sober, and I don't miss it, so to me, that first time right, right there was like, if you want it, you, if you care, or you want to save your family, or you want to change you can have self-discipline and give it up and be sober. This man right here has been sober for two years. And I'm here, this hot girl, you know what I'm saying? Trying to convince him to drink and he wouldn't even budge. So I was amazed by that. And it just, you know, convinced me that, you know, they, my ex and their family could have stopped drinking. The next coincidence, or whatever you call it, sign. Uh, remember I said she had just, my ex's mother just lost her kidney uh, and the liver failure guess what bc just did like five months before that he's literally still healing or whatever he just donated his kidney to his sister five months ago where my mother my ex-mother-in-law just you know drunk it away so this man is a giving man he gave his whole kidney donated to save his sister's life and that hit me on such a level of like wow what's the next sign god um so the next sign is gonna blow your mind too so a year ago remember when my ex-mother-in-law moved in with us remember y'all go back to the video just about november uh, we actually picked her up and it was a very sad moment uh, we had picked her up from, you know, cause she has a home. She can stay with, you know, the, uh, after her, her boyfriend passed away, she, you know, did hit depression. I, I felt bad and, but she was already drinking before that anyways, but she got to live with her aunt, you know, she had family and we were going to pick her up. She didn't even want to come with us. She, her choice by choice, she wanted to stay in a homeless shelter in DC. And that's, and I remember it was a very sad moment for her and, you know, we picked her up from there and we took her back home with us. And we picked her up from there. But she kept trying to run back over there. She said her friends were there. So it's, it's like, a, like a mental illness, I can say. I, I think alcoholism is a mental illness. It can be. And guess what BC does for a living? <laughs> he is a case manager for homeless people in DC to find a job and living. Hmm. What? It's the coincidence of that. It just, it blew my mind from the kidney to the alcoholism, from being sober to to the job career. I was just like, God, you just can't give me another sign. Mind you, you go back to my old videos when I took relationship advice and I said, what you can put up, what you, what you can't put up with. I thought for 10 years that I had to put up with a sloth. I thought for 10 years, I even made Joe, he bought me a sloth. I thought, you know, like now that I think about it, I think he was purposely moving slow. I don't know. But for 10 years, I thought that, okay, his flaw, my ex flaw is being slow and I have to put up with it. When BC lives on like the 10th, 8th, 10th floor, he said, I'll be, I got to run upstairs and get something. I was mentally prepared 
for it to take a long time because that's what I've been dealing with for 10 years. When that man went all the way up to eight to 10 floors, came back down in two seconds, like in two minutes, I wasn't even waiting for long. I said, sir, I'm wet. <laughs> Y'all don't understand something so simple like that can just, just take take my breath away like i've been dealing with somebody so slow so somebody me meeting somebody fast like that like you know it was just it was just great signs and i didn't want to jump into anything i don't want to date because i don't i honestly don't know how i need to take things slow but i'm just grateful and thankful that god even put bc in my life at the time because i was going through so much and he because you know he has he knows sociality he knows you know he talks and he he, he can talk to like to crackheads drug addicts and help them throughout the day he has so much patience and he would talk to me and he helped me he actually honestly he even helped me make that d divorce video he said you cannot say things hothead if you're going to make a response video to him you need to watch it dissect it see what part you need to talk about and that he either lied to you um, um, or pick the topics be organized make the video he honestly helped me through so much like mentally because i thought i was gonna lose my mind y'all swear to god i remember when rem posted that video i didn't know what to do like i didn't know who to turn to i didn't have nobody and he helped me he helped me so much like doing the stuff the right way and I think the best part is because he lives in DC I live in Atlanta and the long distance relationship you go back to watching my old videos I don't ever believe in long distance relationship I used to be like oh no you need to be right here next to me but because he lives over there I live over here it it allowed me to heal you know have a long distance relationship I was able to take my time and heal at the same time getting to know him on a level that I thought I would never know. It's just crazy how the universe circulate me back to four years ago. To Mark Rem's word, when he said, go talk to him. I don't care. I'm still going to talk to her. It's just so crazy how the universe circulate right back to that specific person from four years ago. And I never even gave him the opportunity or even the chance to even get to know him. And now this person is helping me so much. Um, he took me to places on like some dates that I, I, I live in the DMV all my life and I never even knew these certain places and um, paying for things, you know, like opening doors, just, he, just sitting down. He doesn't, how do you say it? He doesn't cuss at me nor does he yell at me or raise his voice and there be times when that was the first argument i ever been in in my life where bc sat me down and talked to me and figured we're, we're gonna fix the fixed situation without yelling without cursing and we're gonna resolve it i never had that I've been in a toxic relationship for 10 years. I'm used to fighting somebody. I'm used to yelling, throwing things, saying hurtful things. Being with BC is completely different. And I didn't think it would ever even exist. But I just know that I prayed and God knows that I don't know how to date. And he sent me somebody that has so much patience. And the long distance actually allowed me to heal. I've been in a healing journey for the past five to six months and I'm doing a lot better. I don't know why I'm getting teary eyed. Ah! No, but and um he had got mad at me. Um he's very how can you say um he doesn't tolerate, you know, he's saying he knows what he wants like. And I said, um, how did you get like this? He said and he told me, he said, I found my peace. BC said, I found my peace two years ago. I've been patient. Uh, I've been sober. And he said, he found his peace. He doesn't tolerate with a lot of stuff. And I was like, why are you single? I was like, you know, for a long time, I kept saying, you deserve better. I was like, um, I was saying, you, you deserve better than me. I said, 
you graduated from an HBU, you have a college degree, you have a career, you don't have kids, you are a unicorn. Like they say, I'm a unicorn, but you're a walking unicorn. Like I was like, I kept saying to him, I have baggage, I'm broken. And I've been through a lot of stuff and I have baggage, I have two kids and you don't, have, you don't need to be with somebody like me. You deserve something better, somebody better. And his exact words to me was like, your children are not baggage, they're a blessing. And I remember just tearing up because for so many years, I didn't want to date because I didn't, I didn't want somebody else to not accept me and my children. And that's why I didn't want to date. That's why I stayed for so long because I didn't want to have another baby father or restart another relationship and be the girl with two different baby fathers. <laughs> and when he said that to me, it was just like, you know, kind of like a relief. You know, I never looked at it that way. I always looked at myself so negative. <laughs> um, and I just, I've been keeping it private because he's a really private person. And he's been teaching me how to be more private, you know, because I like to talk a lot. I like to burn my mouth, gossip, sit with my girlfriends and tell them everything. So it took me a really long time to share this with you guys. And... Uh, sorry. Um, you know, uh, so I, you know, we go visit, I go visit him. Um, you know, he surprised me on a trip. Uh, that's when I went, uh, to, to Vegas. And you know what? I can't believe I went to Vegas and I was, didn't even want to gamble. Like I was free from it. Like I used to gamble so much and I went to like the top place to gamble and didn't even have that itch to to gamble I was enjoying myself and it was the first time you know I had a man I, I I've been paying for trips for 10 years and I've been taking care of everything you know and my thing was I don't imagine me being with somebody who was who wanted to fame or is fame or as hyperactive as me or want the spotlight, you know, we'd probably be fighting or can you imagine me dating some guy and he put me on snap and oh my God, we love me, me. BC is completely different. He barely takes pictures. He is all about family. Okay, what he taught me in the past couple of months is how important family is. Um, the only events he go to is to his family events and all of his friends are from childhood and if not childhood then they're cousins and friends but he only keep it in the family and that's when i realized you know i've been jumping from friends to friends and i've been you know just trying to help everybody but it's time for me to help myself and realize that my family is all i have to you know which is back at home in dc um as far as the children we took it slow, you know what I'm saying? He knows I have kids and, you know, they're, they're nervous and um, into transitioning. And, you know, he, he tells me, this is the crazy part. This is another crazy sign. Uh, remember after that video I made, after the divorce video, Remy went on, uh, he went on Instagram and he posted a video of me spazzing out and in the video, I'm like, I throw something and I'm yelling and he comes up to the, he takes the phone, bring it up to me. And he says, you are, um, you're, you're fucking crazy. You're mental. Where's your, take your medicine, take your fucking medicine. And I'm like, get out of my face. To me, that was so hurtful because he would record me all the time when I would have spasms, like when I would get mad and he held on to it to use it against me and that was the most hurtful part but the hurtful part is like oh take your medicine like he tried to make it seem like i was crazy i'm not the perfect person but i'm not mad for no reason and if you love me why would you want to why would you save videos like that to use against me bc pushed me for therapy and he lived all the way in dc he found a therapist for me out here in atlanta and i remember going to the therapist and I remember going back to the shop and sitting there and I hear my phone goes off and he sent me money 
to pay for the session that I just did. So instead of having an ex who didn't try to find me mental health help, instead of trying to help me, but rather recording me, telling me that I need to take my medicine and that I'm crazy and trying to convince me that I'm crazy 10 years. I met a man who actually cared about my mental health, went out of his way from another state to find me therapy and even pay for my therapy. So I don't know, I just been really grateful um, I've been trying to take it slow because, you know, I know that I can love hard and I know that, you know, what kind of person I am, I don't like to date, but I do just want to say, like, I'm very thankful. Um, everything's been going good. I found myself in a better space, but ladies, there, there is hope out here and <laughs> and that uh, I remember talking to one of my one of my, um, I think I could have been anybody, y'all. I could have made a phone call to like the wrong person who, you know, could have jumped in my videos or take me down the wrong path. Hey, maybe go sell drugs or go be a stripper, go go do this or go party or go turn up in a whole different life. But I just know that God doesn't have that path for me. You know, He knows what kind of person I am, and He just sent me somebody. And I, at first, I was just like, if. If I run from BC, then I'm running away from everything that I prayed for and I will block my blessing. <laughs> and I, I can't even lie. You know, so I, I'm very grateful and I feel really blessed. Um, and he, he, BC is very, very hard on me as far as focusing on my kids, um, removing people from my home. So those are the things that I'm currently working on is just, you know, just finding a space where um, probably downsizing so that me and my kids can get closer and it just be my kids and really that's how I feel like I don't really talk to anybody uh been doing while now at work and do nails I do you know I do my skits I'm still that happy person that y'all see on Instagram um but between us personally on YouTube this is my happy space and I, I feel I feel I feel very relieved um to move forward so yeah <laughs> I just want to say thank you guys so much um you know for listening and tuning into my journey um my journey is still continuing and as long as I have YouTube and we have these vlogs and story time I can share with you guys things that I'm going through. Um, I most likely won't be posting BC, uh, you know, on YouTube because it's private. And I think that it's important for me to protect my future um, relationship. Um, and, you know, just grow in private. But just know that I have met a good person and Everything has been smooth. It's going on six months and everything, I'm growing. I'm learning myself. He's allowing and teaching me to learn myself as a person. I think to learn himself too, because you know, <laughs> I'm that bubbly fun person and I bring out, you know, I like to take pictures. So, and he doesn't, he's private and you know, he's slowly learning some things about me and I'm slowly rubbing off and I'm learning things from him. Uh, so, Yes, that is my new boo, and um, the kids are good. Uh, Juice is actually hilarious. Um, you know, y'all know Juice is the daddy's girl. Uh, she loves her dad, and we're just waiting for him to get himself together. Uh, he has ways to reach out to them, like Instagram, because that's how they reached out to him. Um, I haven't heard anything yet want to play victim and I guess you just want to play victim and say that I'm not letting you know him see them but I gave him many options of ways to see and we're just waiting for it to fall through but God knows that when the time is ready then you know he'll come around but as for now my kids are good 
They are, you know, well fed in school and we're working on getting closer as a family. And, you know, I'm getting closer uh, just to learning myself. I feel like I'm really maturing. But that is the story about my new boo. <laughs> and let's see how it goes. But as of now, it's going great. I feel very blessed. And keep praying for us. Pray for, my, for me, my Sammy, my family. And ladies, make sure you take care of yourself. Make sure that you take care of your mental health. And make sure you pray. Um, God will never let you down. And if you've been a good person, good things will come. Just know that you do deserve it because I have to learn that I deserve it. Oh, wow, I didn't think this story time will go this route and get this personal. But I love you guys. <laughs>